Is it a headache being listed on the JSE? It w you know what? I was 34 at the time when I listed the company. I was pretty young, um, commercially possibly immature in terms of a listing. So you had to learn the hard way. And uh, it's an interesting process. I think the JSC, I mean, if I could like, in hindsight, 2020 vision is just a wonderful thing. But if I could, you know, turn the clock back, I'd say there, there should have been an education process. I mean, because there are Would I was you not have listed the company in hindsight? No, I would have, because the listing was a fantastic... Um, capital raising exercise. ...mechanism in which we raised capital to grow. We couldn't have acquired at the rate we did. I mean, we acquired in excess of 20 companies. And with that came disposals as well, because not every acquisition turns out wonderful. And we were able to create critical mass to raise capital, to grow the group internationally. And uh, in addition to that, I mean, without a public market following that, we couldn't have raised that capital easily. So it was, it was all, so certainly for us, the listing was, um, was essential. As a two-man band, and, and you refer to the consultancy nature of Softline at that time. Was it difficult knocking on doors and, and introducing yourselves? Did you leverage off relationships, existing relationships? It was very difficult. I mean, we came out of auditing, literally we were, we, were, we just graduated and we came out of an auditing uh, environment. So you had no track record. I mean, and it's a tough one. I mean, I really feel for people starting businesses, but you've got to persevere. And yeah, you do, you knock on doors, but the first question you get asked is, well, What's your track record? Yeah, I'm saying, well, we've got, well, you know, we'll do a good job, well, but what jobs have you done? We haven't done any. So you, you always find somebody who'll take a chance on you. There's always that, you know, that first customer. But you've How got do you keep yourself looking upward and, and rather than becoming completely deflated by negativity when, when people say to you, we can't hire you because you don't have a track record? Well, there was no choice because what was the, the flip side of that was, you know, going back onto a job which we didn't want to do, we were, I mean, we were really driven individuals. I'd say, I mean, we had this burning desire to succeed and create a business. And I think, you know, if you've got that, if it's in your heart and it's in your gut, you can, and you'll succeed. How do you succeed. handle no? Because it's a difficult thing. When, when you are passionate about a concept and, and you really believe in it and, and you get no repeatedly. It's very frustrating. It's a frustrating answer to get no. And certainly when you know you've got ability and you believe you can do it, it's one thing you believing it, but you know the next person is not going to believe it because your track record doesn't warrant that belief. But I think with perseverance, you, you'll get there. I mean, uh, and and you know what? So you jump the hurdles higher to start. You make sure you climb over it, and once that momentum starts, very slowly, well, you can use your first installation as a reference point to your second. And can you remember your first installation? Yeah, vaguely. I mean, I remember going out there to a client and actually teaching them how to use a computer. But I just recently learned myself how to use one, so that was interesting as well. The biggest challenge that, that you've faced to date, uh, obviously you've taken us back to, to the time, uh, the, the dot-com crash and the, the delisting from the JSC. But personally, the biggest challenge that you faced? I think in business, the biggest challenge I faced was the, was the potential buyback and delisting. That was a very trying time because you had to keep the business going you had to keep the people, your team, motivated. You had to keep yourself motivated. You were dealing with the market, which were your investors and in your institutions. Everybody's knocking you. And, uh, and at the same time, you know, you're trying to generate new business out there as well. So it's a v it was a very trying time, but uh, a very good lesson. And uh, the business emerged stronger. And you know, since then, our business has increased uh, you know, fourfold in terms of our profitability, our customer reach has increased substantially. Being part of Sage has been a great experience, and it is a great experience because you know, I, si uh, I travel to the UK a lot, and I sit up at the Sage, as part of the Sage Exco, which just, you know, there are a few of us. And uh, Sage is a similar company to what Softline was. Sage was founded in England, same thing, startup business uh, in the early 80s, two entrepreneurs. It's a very similar story to ours. Uh, they had the pound behind them and they had the rating within the UK to go and globally acquire companies. They've done an amazing job at acquisitions. Softline was one of their best acquisitions in terms of return on investment. How have you learned a lot through the partnership? It's fantastic. It's because we're running the same business in France, in Germany, in Spain, in Portugal, in Poland, in the US, in England. So you see the same picture 
in a multitude of countries and you're able to like monitor the different economies. So if we look at what we do in France, for example, it's exactly what we do in South Africa, homegrown application built for the French market. And it's a consolidation of small entrepreneurial companies that have been acquired to create the French business.